Well guys, I was actually going to do this car off camera. This is a 2006 Chevy Impala with a 3500 engine. It's 3.5 liter and it has an EVAP vent control circuit malfunction code. I've done enough of these EVAP vent problems that I felt like I didn't need to film this one and I just started my troubleshooting with it and this one's different than what you normally see so I'm going to film it so let me show you the codes first it is a P0449 is the one we're going after and it says EVAP emission vent control circuit it says test not passed since clear test failed so there's some other stuff on there uh, that made me think about well maybe that is a history code the owner of the vehicle replaced the vent solenoid and the connector that goes to it I'll show you that here in a second before they brought the vehicle here and um, so yeah let me show you what we have I'll post links in the description of this video for other evap vent solenoids I've done on GM's this one's going to be different um, let's go in the back and I'll give you the first test that I did off camera okay so I'll keep you focused here on the on the power probe using a power probe for this one and honestly because I'm laying on the ground and you see how rusty the frame is underneath anytime I'm working in the back of the car um, this is starting to become a tool of choice just because I don't have to fight finding a good ground or power I'm already connected to the battery for those of you that don't have this you can follow along just using a digital multimeter okay just got to make sure you have a good ground doing these tests so the two wires that are back here is a power feed and a ground side switched control and so what we want to do is we want to check both of them this is the power feed for it there's 12 volts on that and then we check the control wire which is the white wire in this case and we have the same voltage so what that tells me is my solenoid is intact that my winding is good and that uh, we do not need a solenoid this fault code is not from an open coil so what we want to do now is we want to take the scan tool in a bi-directional mode Let's see if I can keep this focused with you guys kind of laying on the ground here doing this so we'll go back and we'll go functional tests I want my out output controls and I want my evap vent solenoid closed and open test alright these are normally open valves so we want to close it and notice my voltage is the same. Did that move at all? There's open. Now it's staying at 12.18. And closed. Sorry, I hit the wrong button there with the data display. Just up top. Notice my my voltage is not changing. So what this is telling us guys is we have an open circuit between the computer and this solenoid in the back or we have a faulty computer. There's one other thing here guys as we look at the scan data. The circuit status of this vent says incomplete. Let me go back here for a second. Because that's different than what I just saw before I turned the camera on. If I go to data display and go to my evap data yeah right here that is it is listed differently so this evap vent solenoid uh, short to ground or open this is the computer looking at the circuit and it's telling you just with the scan data that it's it's uh, seeing low voltage so with the ground side switch circuit we should the computer should see 12 volts with the circuit off and near zero volts with the circuit on. So right here on the scan tool, it's actually telling us that, sorry about that, that we have a problem in the wiring. So I need to find that wire at the computer or I need to do some visual inspections along the way. And honestly, guys, this is why I turned the camera on right here. I mean, something 
is broken in between the computer and this unless the owner who's the one that replaced the valve was doing something he shouldn't have and smoked the computer driver in the process of testing um, what I've seen in the past on every single one of these is the wiring back here though you'll have an issue let me take this power probe out the wiring you'll have a problem right right in the connectors themselves like right in here they'll actually be broken inside the insulation so you guys that are watching this that have an open circuit or low voltage code this this code for these evaps if you read 12 and 0 that's suggesting an open in the solenoid and you need to replace the solenoid if you're reading 12 and 12 like I have with this same code then you have an open in the wiring and oh sweet did you see that that wiring was not uh, I just got lucky there and pulling on this and if you know it's funny I, I did this off camera and I tugged on these and it was fine um, and that's why I turned the camera on. I said, man, I I'm going to have an opportunity to show maybe a bad computer driver or an open in the harness. And so what I was just talking about is every one of these I've ever seen, when you have a problem, it's, it's been right in this area. And, and there it was right there. So I just was tugging on that, not hard at all. And um, that uh, is why I'm setting that fault code. We need to fix that connector. And I can prove it to you what I'll do is I'll strip the wiring back here and we'll connect um, our uh, power probe and I'll show you the driver test and, and honestly you can just use a regular incandescent test light too would work um, let me show you that test before we uh, wrap this up one more thing guys um, take a look at the connector and uh, you can see the green cruddies that are inside of that so that's been broken for a while you know the funny thing is is it it just uh, when you look at the wiring connectors they look fine and again what you want to do is you tug on them and you saw what happened so here's my setup using a jumper to my pyro probe now and I strip the uh, connector back on the one side I'm checking the computer side of this circuit now okay and now what I'll do is I'll change this mode on the pyro probe to the uh, uh, won't let me with it connected hang on but what I want to do is change this to a how do I change it oh learn the tool there Danner I want to change this to my driver test okay so now it just switches the tip of this uh, to a uh, actually what it's doing is it's taking it through the LED bulb and then putting the ground of the bulb which isn't grounded yet on this side of the circuit so you're only talking about I think last I checked it was around 30 around 30 milliamps so I had some questions on what the tool puts what kind of load does it put in the driver mode okay um, notice the scan tool at the same time I just plugged that in see what it said it just dropped right there to uh, incomplete now I clear the codes that'll go to okay but um, notice what we're doing is we're, we're just essentially putting a bulb the LED bulb of the tool as the coil as a good coil and now when I energize the circuit let me show that to you let's get out of here and uh, functional It's so hard to do laying on the ground. Output controls, EVAP vent. And now when I turn this on, which would be closed, if I close it, see the voltage on the tool drop down to 0 0.2 and see the green light light. And I turn it off. All right, so how is my computer driver? as I'm turning this on and off so closed is on and open is off again 
the tip voltage on this. What you're reading would be the ground side of the LED bulb on this tool. And when the computer grounds the circuit, you see that voltage will drop. And it's putting about, well, whatever the current draw is of that little green LED bulb, which is uh, the owner's manual of the tool says less than 30 milliamps. So computer safe for sure. And, um, you know, you're using the tool to substitute the coil in the car on the solenoid. That's what that is. So this would be now the tool is feeding 12 volts through the bulb. And the bulb does not have a ground right now. So with no current flow, you have no voltage drop. And that's why you're reading this number. And uh, so, yeah, pretty cool test. And for you guys that need more info on what I'm talking about, power ground side switching, again, I will put descriptions in the link of, I will put links <laughs> in the description of this video uh, on other EVAP ones that I've done. And I'll also include a power and ground side switching video that you guys can watch. Um, so now at this point, the last thing I need to do is I need to fix this connector and uh, that's not going to be very fun, but maybe I'll show you how I do that. Uh, one last thing, one last thing before I do that. See the incomplete on the vent circuit status. So if we go out, let's uh, exit and what we want to do is we want to clear these codes. And as long as I keep my tool, it's important when I clear these fault codes that I keep my tool connected. Otherwise, it'll immediately set the fault again. The, what the computer is doing is it recognizes um, a problem in the circuit by a low voltage signal before it turns it on. It should be high voltage with it off and low voltage on. And if I take my tool out of the picture, it will be low voltage all the time, setting the fault code. Let's go back to the codes menu and reread them because I just cleared them. Okay, cool. And now when we go back to the scan tool under my data display, and under my EVAP data, you're going to see that my circuit is going to say OK. Why does it say incomplete? It shouldn't say incomplete. Do I need to start the car? It should say OK right now. Maybe it's incomplete because it didn't test it. It shouldn't say incomplete. I don't care about that. Watch what happens when I take the tool out of the picture. I'll just unplug it from here. Watch the scan tool at the same time. See what the computer just did? It switched it from incomplete to short to ground. So it recognizes the fault immediately. Yeah, the tip of the tool is 12 here, but look, I unplugged it. So what's the what's this saying up here? That's zero volts. Short to ground or open would be what the computer would see on that wire as far as voltage with the circuit at zero. Did I say that right? Zero volts would be a short to ground or open. So scan data incomplete uh, it should have gone away when i cleared that code that's not an issue um, i'm not going to focus on that let's fix the wiring we'll be done with this car all right guys so i couldn't uh i could not do this underneath the car hold the camera and show you what to do so i actually cut the good feed wire and it's not going to be an issue we're going to uh we're going to fix that as well so I'll just kind of walk you through my, my typical repair. And I really started to like the heat shrink style butt connector. So that's, that's going to be the feed wire fix. And when you use the crimpers, what you want to do is um, this, this part of the crimper actually says um, insole, so insulated. So that's the part you want to use for an insulated butt connector so you don't damage the outside of it little tips you learn over the years, things maybe you never paid attention to. And we're gonna crimp that. And then we'll 
fix the other side of the car and then we'll we'll shrink that um i could probably show you part of that here the nice thing about a butane soldering gun is the top of it we have a hole that we can actually use um as a as a way to um shrink or heat use it as heat for the heat shrink connectors like this just want to show you guys that this is in fact a heat shrink style butt connector and it's actually a very good design because um, once you heat these to a certain point there is a sealant that will come out of the end of this and I'll see if I can get you a shot of it okay so that's going to be a perfect seal when I put that back on the car Don't, I don't see the sealer coming out of this. It's what, it's what we want to have. And then we'll do the rest of that on the car. All right, so now fixing the, the bad saddle. Leave the soldering gun go there. What we want to do is take this connector apart. All right, so take that blue connector off the end and now we need to release this from here this can be a little bit tricky um, what I'm going to use is just a t-pin and um, if you look at the connector there's a um, the side the terminal goes in which is here and then just behind that is a little cutout and so what we want to do is push this into that cutout and uh, try to release the there's a mechanism inside that we want to fold over. Kind of, I'll show it to you when I get this apart. So I'm putting pretty good tension on this. This is kind of a little bit big of a pin. I think I got it. And then once you release that from that side, then you pull this out, okay? And the part that I just folded over was this piece here. Let's make sure you guys are getting this in the shot. Okay, so the piece that I just, when I went down inside the connector, I was going between here and here, and I was forcing this piece right here down. So when you're done, we want to bend this back up. So that's what you want it to look like when you put it back in the connector. And again, so what I was doing from the outside is I was taking this pin, I was going down inside and I was forcing this part down so I could pull it out of the connector. All right, so now what I'll do is um, should have enough. I, I, I want to leave this insulation here while well, we'll reuse that. I'm gonna pull this out. So I'm just gonna slide the weather pack seal out, okay? And then we will strip this insulation away you can you can see the sealer if you look close i think you guys can see it you see the sealer coming out of the end of that that is a perfect perfect seal so hey uh this is for my brother sorry about the compressor noise but hey it's the it's the Danner Cant vehicle. <laughs> so that's for you, bro. <laughs> All right, so I've shown this procedure before in the video that I'm thinking of. It was a crank sensor connector on a neon, and I showed how to save a connector like this. And what we want to do is we want to heat the end of this insulation and then pull it away because I want to save as much of the wire right here as I can. And so I'm just going to use the, the butane um, soldering gun for that. And just using the kind of breather hole on the end of that to heat up this insulation. And then I'm just going to... Uh, going to use my fingers and pull it off hopefully without burning myself too much I normally use a lighter which works so there you go so it's a little blurry 
Okay. All right. So we're going to use that wire to fix this. Just going to strip the end of this is 20 gauge wire I'm using. And the important part here is that I have a good solder because I want to reuse this this weather pack seal. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to mesh these two together like that. Right, and then we're gonna grab the ends. We're gonna twist it a little bit hard because it's so close to the connector. I really want this to be tight. That's about as tight as I can get it. And then from there, we're just going to solder that. Hey, Pete. You think you could get um, any thicker solder here, man? I know you guys are going to say, clean your gun. It's so much crap for my soldering. It's a butane soldering gun here, people. All right. What I found to be the most effective is to get a little puddle underneath what you're soldering. So in between the gun and the wire first, this helps transfer the heat. And you see how quickly that absorbed into that, and we'll go all the way down into that connector. And I might not be able to get that weather pack seal in there because I just soldered that to the housing underneath I'll be fine though now we're good all right so now put this back on okay slide we're gonna slide that back down The only thing I did wrong with this repair is I left too much wire on the outside. Open this up a little bit. Okay. We'll put some liquid electrical tape over top of that. Kind of crimp this back down. What would have been better is if I would have shortened that a little bit. I might be able to get away with sliding this insulation down. Probably not. We could try it. I'll try to slide it down. Nope. All right. So now I could use some heat shrink over that too. But now we're going to put this connector back in, making sure we put it in the right direction. So I want the locking tab to be on the top. Just gonna push that through. There, we have one repaired connector. So now the only issue is I got some bare wire right there.
I'm gonna use a little piece of heat shrink. Now my last concern with this repair is that I, I used red wire so I just have to make sure I, I get this connected correctly. It would actually still work if you did reverse polarity the connectors. What are you going to make all that noise for, Pete? Go take this back to the car and uh, finish our repair. Oh, one last thing. Um, get you a shot of the inside of that. And uh, I, I'm actually going to put some uh, sealer inside of that. In fact, I'll do it with both. You saw what happened. I mean, it corroded. We get any water in here we're going to cause corrosion again it'll take a couple years but we still want to prevent that all right we're back in the car everything's all sealed up and uh, we'll put some black conduit over this of course when we're done just wanted you guys to see the repair and what i'm going to do is just uh turn this valve on which is to close it we should hear a click i'm just going to go back and forth on and off Okay, so we are fixed for sure. The last thing to comment on would be this incomplete status that we're looking at right here. Uh, the reason that that says incomplete is most likely just the OBD2 monitor has not run yet. You can see some other ones here like the purge status also says incomplete, you know, since the codes were cleared. My guess is then once the monitor runs, it would say okay on the scan tool but it's pretty cool that we can use the scan tool to help us in troubleshooting uh, and again I showed this on another one recently it was actually on a Jeep uh, or it was another Chevy <laughs> it might have been another Impala for that matter but I showed you guys how you can use that the short to ground uh, short to battery voltage the okay the incomplete mainly the short to ground and open one which is the the uh, Second one up from incomplete. I'll show you one more time. I'll unplug the solenoid and we'll watch that go to open slash short to ground. That's with the solenoid unplugged. So you can see the computer monitors that all the time, whether or not it is energizing it. And that is plugged back in. And you see the signal on the scan tool change so we're good that's it uh, open wire on a evap vent solenoid make sure you guys are checking for that if you find the solenoid is good that would be your next most likely thing is a broken wire right near the connector